Have you ever taken a glass out of a refrigerator and observed the change? If not, then try it out. Take a cold glass out of a refrigerator and keep it outside for some time at the room temperature. After some time, you will find water drops at the outer surface of the glass. What did just happen? Did the water present inside the glass has come out? Well, the answer is no. It is not the water present inside the glass, but the water present in the form of water vapor in our surrounding has stuck to the outer surface of the glass. These water vapor present in our surrounding comes in contact with the cold surface of the water and transforms into tiny water drops and hence we can notice or find these water droplets on the outer surface of the glass. So from the previous example we learned that air contains water vapor. Water is present in air in any form like gas, liquid or solid. So the clouds that we see, the rain, fog, snow etc that we enjoy occur because air contains water. Yes, you heard me right. Air contains water. Air mostly contains water in gaseous form and it is known as water vapor. It is one of the many valuable elements that is present in air. Now, the amount of water vapor present in air is known as humidity. Humidity is responsible for the occurrence of different weather phenomena. So, in the absence of humidity, that is, if air does not contain water vapor, then we will not be able to enjoy clouds, fog, snow or rain. Now you must have experienced that during summer we feel hot and sweat a lot while during winter our skin feels dry and we have to apply a moisturizer to protect our skin. Now why does this happen? This happens because due to heat, the intermolecular spaces between the air molecules increases and therefore warm air has more capacity to hold moisture. So warm air contains less air molecules and more water vapor than cold air. Therefore, during summer, the air becomes saturated with water vapor. So hot air contains more water vapor. And since the amount of moisture during summer is more, so sweat evaporates less rapidly during summer and we feel hot and sticky. Conversely, during winter, air contains less moisture. So our skin loses moisture and we feel less hot and our skin becomes dry during winter. So now do you understand why do we feel hot and sweat a lot during summer but not in winter. Now let us perform an activity. Take three glasses of three different sizes, small, medium and large. Fill up the small glass up to its brim. Here we can see that the small glass is 100% full. Now pour the same amount of water in the second glass. Here we can see that the medium glass is partially full or it is 50% full. Now repeat the same step for the third time. Pour the same amount of water in the third glass. Here we can see that only one fourth part of the toilet glass gets filled up. So the third glass is only 25% full. So in the previous example, the three different sizes of glasses were representation of different volumes of air. Now just like the glass contains water, air also contains water vapor. See, this is a column of air and we can see that water vapor is present in air. 
now the total amount or the actual amount of water vapor present in a given volume of air is known as absolute humidity absolute humidity measures the actual or exact amount of water vapor present in a given volume of air now if a certain volume of air contains more water vapor then absolute humidity is more see look at these two pictures here we can see that a fixed volume of air see the air column is fixed so the volume of air in both these cases is same but here we can see that more water vapor is present in this case whereas less water vapor is present in this case so absolute humidity is more in this case while absolute humidity is less in this case now absolute humidity is independent of air temperature this is because absolute humidity measures the water vapor present in a given or a fixed volume of air and therefore absolute humidity does not depend on air temperature now we can express absolute humidity in gram per meter cube now if we say absolute humidity is 10 gram per meter cube what does it mean it means that 10 gram of water vapor is present in 1 cubic meter of air so absolute humidity measures the amount of water vapor present in per cubic meter of air now before we proceed with our lesson let us try to answer this question absolute humidity measures the total amount of dash present in air water vapor dust particles oxygen or nitrogen well the correct answer is water vapor absolute humidity measures the total amount of water vapor present in air now these two chart shows the weather updates of two cities namely kolkata and mumbai for a particular day here we can see that the temperature of kolkata is 31 degree celsius and the amount of humidity is 77% on the other hand the temperature of mumbai is 27 degree celsius and the amount of humidity is 99% it is more humid so here we can see that a warmer place is less humid than a cooler place well if you remember i just mentioned that absolute humidity is independent of air temperature but here we can see that humidity is inversely related to air temperature so this is not definitely absolute humidity this is another measure of humidity also absolute humidity as i just mentioned is measured in gram per meter cube but here we can see that humidity is expressed in percentage so this is a different kind of humidity that is used in the purpose of weather forecasting and this is not absolute humidity so let us learn about this type of humidity now let us go back to an example of three glasses here as i just mentioned the three glasses are representation of different volumes of air at different temperature now compare this case with this picture here we can see that the amount of water vapor present in all the three cases is the same see this blue circle is constant for the three cases but here we can see that as temperature increases the capacity of air to hold moisture that is this entire circle 
increases. So at higher temperature air has more capacity to hold moisture but it is holding less amount of water vapor than its maximum capacity in these two cases. So in the first case the air is 100 percent full but in these two cases the air is not completely full. Here only 50 percent of air contains moisture and here at 30 degrees Celsius only 25 percent of air contains moisture. So here we can compare the actual amount of water vapor present in air with the maximum capacity of air. Now the concept that compares the actual amount of water vapor present in air with its maximum capacity is known as relative humidity. So relative humidity tells us the actual amount of water vapor present in air compared to how much it can hold that is the maximum capacity of air at a particular temperature. Now again look at this picture. Here at 10 degree Celsius the relative humidity is 100 percent because the amount of water vapor present in air exactly equates to the maximum capacity of air. Now here relative humidity is 50 percent because the actual amount of water vapor present in air is less than its maximum capacity. Again here at 30 degrees Celsius relative humidity is only 25 percent because the actual amount of water vapor present in air is quite less compared to the maximum capacity of air. Now relative humidity is also the ratio between the actual amount of water vapor present in air and maximum water holding capacity of air at a given temperature. So this is how you can express relative humidity. Now relative humidity is expressed in percentage. See here we have expressed relative humidity in percentage 100 percent, 50 percent, 25 percent. Now also in this picture we can see that as temperature increases relative humidity falls. See here at 10 degree Celsius relative humidity is 100 percent, at 20 degree Celsius relative humidity is 50 percent and at 30 degree Celsius relative humidity is only 25 percent. So here we can see that relative humidity is inversely proportional to air temperature. Let us establish this fact with the help of a numerical example. Here we have considered two cases. In the first case the air temperature is 15 degree Celsius and the maximum capacity of air to hold moisture is 25 gram per meter cube. Now the actual amount of water vapor or the moisture content of the air is 20 gram per meter cube. Now in the second case when the air temperature rises to 30 degree Celsius the maximum capacity or the moisture holding capacity of air also increases and the capacity is 50 gram per meter cube. But the moisture content of the air that is the actual amount of water vapor present in air remains the same that is 20 gram per meter cube. So now let us find out the relative humidity of air in these two cases. Now this is the formula that we use for finding the relative humidity of air. Let us calculate the relative humidity of air for case 1. It is equal to the actual amount of water vapor present in air which is 20 gram.
compared to the actual capacity of air which is 25 multiplied by 100. Now this is 4 which is equal to 80 percent. Now we will do the same for the second case. So here we calculate relative humidity for the second case RH equals to actual amount of moisture present in both the case remains the same that is 20 while the maximum capacity of air increases to 50 and this multiplied by 100 so 2 and 20 multiplied by 2 equals to 40 percent. So the relative humidity in first case is 80 percent and in the second case the relative humidity is 40 percent. So this is the answer of our numerical example at 15 degrees Celsius we find that the relative humidity is 80 percent while at 30 degrees Celsius we find the relative humidity is 40 percent. So here we see that as temperature increases relative humidity falls. So with the help of numerical example we find that relative humidity is inversely proportional or inversely related to the temperature of air. So now do you understand why Kolkata being a warmer place has less relative humidity than Mumbai which is a cooler place. Now the type of humidity that is used in weather forecasting is relative humidity. Relative humidity indicates the likelihood of precipitation or likelihood of rainfall. If relative humidity is more then the likelihood of precipitation or the chances of rainfall is more. See here relative humidity is 99 percent. So there is more chances of rainfall while here relative humidity is just 77 percent so likelihood of rainfall is less. Now what does 100 percent relative humidity mean? When relative humidity is 100 percent it means that the air has become fully saturated. Now saturated air cannot hold any more water vapor or the water vapor present in air slowly transforms to water droplets. It is almost like your tummy is full and you cannot eat any more. Now the temperature at which the air becomes fully saturated and it cannot hold any more water vapor is known as dew point. So dew point is the temperature at which air becomes fully saturated. Now in our example the dew point is 10 degree Celsius. This is because at 10 degree Celsius we can see that the air is fully saturated with water vapor and the relative humidity in this case is 100 percent. Whereas in these cases the air is not completely full with water vapor or it has more capacity to hold water vapor. So dew point is the temperature at which air becomes fully saturated and this case the relative humidity is 100 percent. So we have discussed about two types of humidity that is absolute humidity and relative humidity. Let us now differentiate between these two types of humidity. Absolute humidity is the actual amount of water vapor present in air whereas relative humidity is the amount of moisture or water vapor present in air 
compared to its maximum capacity. Now absolute humidity as I have mentioned earlier is independent of air temperature that is absolute humidity does not depend on air temperature whereas relative humidity is inversely dependent on air temperature. So as air temperature increases relative humidity falls. Absolute humidity is expressed in gram per cubic meter whereas relative humidity is expressed in percentage. Absolute humidity is not considered in weather forecasting whereas relative humidity is an essential feature of weather forecasting. It indicates the likelihood of rainfall. So, these are the main differences between absolute humidity and relative humidity. Now, how will you measure humidity? A dry and wet thermometer is used to measure humidity in air and the name of this instrument is hygrometer. Look at this picture. This is the picture of a hygrometer. A hygrometer has a dry bulb and a wet bulb. These dry and wet bulb measures the air temperature daily. The difference between the values of dry thermometer and wet thermometer gives the humidity of air. So we can measure humidity with the help of an instrument that is hygrometer. So in today's lesson we first understood the meaning of humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in air. Then we discuss about the two types of humidity that is absolute humidity and relative humidity. We have also compared between these two types of humidity. Finally, we have discussed about a device that is used to measure humidity and the name of this device is hygrometer. In our next video, we will discuss about evaporation and the factors that affects the rate of evaporation. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now